Well, I come to linguistics by way of anthropology and chemistry, science fiction, and so I think it really makes sense now that I'm on this side of the page to be working with zombies and language and language learning from the perspective of linguistics, media studies, cultural studies, um, ethnography, and um, I think it's so important to bring these fields together because often we're drawing from similar literature, similar histories about um, how language comes to make meaning for different communities across time and across geographies. And when we pause and we realize that I'm talking about post-colonialism much in the same way that uh, somebody from cultural studies also is, that we can come together and see how different texts and voices um, make meaning for many of our participants in this research um, in ways that linger and inform our understanding of our present moment. Most of the world is multilingual and the reality of the way that cultural uh, modes of communication, popular culture flow around the globe, is that we're living our lives increasingly in a transnational way. Um, and with crossing borders comes contact with other languages and cultures. And receiving those accents, those regional differences, those new vocabularies in a way that understands them as additively significant, I think is the way we need to be moving forward. Um, when we're thinking about anti-globalist discourses, those are really discourses of fear. And so when I teach about zombies, about fear, racism, and zombies together, about language coursing through all of those different modes, um, I'm teaching students about how language has been ensconced in uh, reins of power throughout time and how it is coursing through our understandings of who we are right now. And so um, to think about why language matters is to think about why I matter, why you matter. Um, it's a way of living. It's part of our worldview. And I think the best thing we can do is to not be afraid of receiving and hearing someone else speak in a different language. So for students of color going abroad, I think one of the challenges they face is not so much that their, uh, their embodied differences are a problem, but that maybe the people that they encounter in these new spaces read them in certain ways that are connected to the social histories of those host countries. And not only that, I think students of color are also in a position where they very quickly have to acclimate to the vocabularies of race and difference in these new spaces. And so that becomes part of the experience of being a language learner, a study abroad sojourner of color um, around the world, um, is that you go to these spaces, you absorb, encounter, and navigate and negotiate, um, often encountering it in that additional language. But then that becomes a part of your identity and your notion of self when you come back to your host country. And so for myself, um, my ways of understanding my own blackness and my own black womanness out there um, have greatly informed how I feel and how I understand um, my social identity as an African-American woman. I think there's two ways to think about this question. One is on the part of the person uh, encountering the violence and on the part of the aggressor. Um, we can think of aggressors as ideologues to some degree. And groupthink is a wonderful way of applying the zombie metaphor and mythology to how ideas become viral and shape um, group actions without much critical uh, perspective. And so there's that kind of zombie action happening. But on the part of, I think, structurally oppressed people, zombies have become, uh, oddly enough, a mouthpiece for describing 
the experiences of being structurally disadvantaged. And I think that when I'm working with zombies as uh, object of research, I'm really responding, I think, in a timely way to how people around the world are theorizing in a very popular way and perhaps non-academic way about their everyday experiences with racism and discrimination and being silenced. Um, zombies technically in most mythologies don't speak or if they do it's a very stilted and guttural sound. It's not anything we recognize as language but at the same time there are people among us, living people, who speak in ways that we may not recognize as language. And those could be people who sign uh, as part of their language, who gesture as part of their language, who speak non-standard varieties of the languages that we read uh, in, in books and textbooks. And so to think about zombies as having some kind of bearing or uh, metaphorical meaning to think about and address the experiences of folks who speak languages that are disrespected or underappreciated, I think is so valuable because um, it has us thinking about, first of all, why do we enjoy zombie fiction? But then also, um, what can we do with it in terms of serving a common good? I think the digital is profound because it has in many ways virally captured our attention and changed our lifestyles. And this is just over a matter of years. Um, we all have phones in our hands, earphones in our, in our ear canals, and we're all channeled in to streams of culture. And I think for the academic pursuit to remain relevant and to connect with many streams of popular thought and to, um, in some ways, influence that and be shaped by it, it has to be in contact with the digital. Um, because there's so many publics that interact every day on the, on the digital plane. Um, I think about myself as a Twitter user, um, an Instagrammer, um, and I think about how I want my work to have an impact. I think one of the reasons why I turned to the digital humanities and why I went into sort of more public humanities was because I was thinking about the participants in, in my research. This was during my field research in, in Amman, Jordan, with American Study Abroad students. And I was like, you know what? I I'm supposed to write a paper about this that's going to go into some journal behind a paywall. And, but at the same time, I want these students, these participants, these everyday people of Amman, I want them to be able to connect to the work. How can I do that? Noticing also that if I um, publish in a journal um, that it's most likely going to be in English, and I'm speaking to these students and to these everyday people in Arabic. So how can I bring those two together? And I thought that the digital was a very good space to do that. And um, a, a bit of short film is, is another way to do that. And, and I think you know, seeing the responses of the people who participate in that work um, and who are able to access that work freely through the online um, resources is exceptionally rewarding because I know that I am sharing the work with people for whom it matters the most. And I think the digital allows us to do that as uh, researchers and, and folks who spend a lot of time on campuses where we can be very focused about our work. But remembering that a lot of why our work matters is because of the off-campus lives that we live every day. And I think those are between you know, my iPhone, my computer, my TV, and um, the walks that I take out there in public space. So the digital, I think, is a way of research and um, thinking to be a part of public space. So I'm so excited that Zombies Speak Swahili uh, is coming out soon. Um, it's the culmination of so many different strands of work that I've been doing. And because I've been spending so much time with zombies, um, I mean, that's not a bad thing, 
but I've been thinking about transhumanism and uh, ways that we are thinking about humans in the future, how are we modifying ourselves or thinking about how we can access our brains in the future, detach from our bodies, uploading, downloading our thoughts. Um, and so I'm working on a project that is looking at representations of altered states of consciousness and bodies in popular um, TV and film, um, looking at Grey's Anatomy, for example, um, and other kinds of medical procedures that are imagined for public consumption, even though they're not actually practically possible right now. So this is like the next stage of looking at zombies and embodiments and language and discourse. Um, and so I'm still working on that project, but I'm very excited about it. And I'm continuing to think about language learning and um, why language matters for us now and will always matter for us, even if we settle Mars and get out there beyond, uh, you know, we're still going to want to communicate and even communicate with those who we cannot yet uh, imagine.